I want to walk you through our recently released uh, Territory Parallelogram Planting Unit. Uh, it was released this year for the 2018 field days. We have had some out for 2018 sowing. Um, hopefully some of you got to see it at the 2018 field days around and some of us uh, got to talk you through the units face to face. But for those of you that didn't get that chance, we wanted to be able to do it here. So a couple of things about why we settled on this design and how it came to be and the things that we were trying to achieve. So in here, um, a couple of the main things were uh, trash flow. So a lot of parallelograms get a, uh, a bad rap for trash clearance and rightly so. Um, so in this unit we've sort of done everything we can to maximise the trash that we can get through. So that includes, we've kept the unit quite clean, you'll see it's fairly streamlined, there's not a lot for trash to hang up on. Um, down here our shank angle is really optimised for trash flow and our height under frame, so if we're in at about 50 mils under the ground, we're going to have 800 mils of underbar clearance which should be fairly industry leading and uh, it makes a massive difference as far as what we can do for trash. The other drama that a lot of parallelograms suffer from or a lot of the hesitation around them is due to wear and specifically in pins, bushes and pivots. Now when we do get a long unit we're going to be dealing with leverage. We farm up and back predominantly but we uh, we're always going to have instance we, instances we go around trees, we do headlands, that sort of thing. There's going to be some level of force transferred into our uh, parallelogram mechanism. The nature of a parallelogram, we're going to have at least four pivots in there. So that's certainly what we have here. Those are all braced with UHMW wear material between, but they're all locked up. Our, our, uh, our leverage or our force is not absorbed in our pivots, it's absorbed in these plates. So you'll see we've got one high and one low there in a straight line. And when we do have force applied, which we invariably we will, that's being absorbed within those plates. So it's not being transferred into here, which is really saving your pins and bushes. The other thing when we uh, hydraulic rams, we've done this on, on our all-rounder series and, and plenty of others around in the industry use it, but the ram is floating on a spherical bearing, so it's also not having the force transferred into its seals. You'll see two, two hoses going in, that is a double acting cylinder. The reason is not because we suck the units up at the end of the run, our bar is doing the lifting um, and, the, uh, and the units will hang down. So they do have a lot of travel, they've got uh, a 450 mil total travel, so they're going to fall down there 200 mil and, uh, and be carried by the bar around the corner. The nice part about that is we don't have to run an active circuit. So we're accumulating our oil when we, when we pump in and we, if we set that at um, say up to 700 pounds of breakout, um, we'll set our accumulators at that pressure and they'll maintain that for us as the units move and, and adapt for the ground. Uh, the other big thing we really wanted to achieve with this unit, or one of our design criteria, was we really wanted to be able to vary our breakout and our press wheel pressure somewhat independently. Um, those in a lot of cases are tied together very finitely and, uh, and you can't sort of adjust that without backing off your shank. You, you, so as a result, you tend to overpack or underpack. So what we've done is we've used a cam in the headstock, which we've got three positions here for a, um, for a light, medium and heavy press wheel pressure. So we'll obviously vary our hydraulic pressure by our accumulators or, or, or the pressure in our hydraulic system. That is a constant, but by changing this here, uh, we can change how much pressure we put down on the ground. And that simply changes our angle um, and, and the relationship between where the hydraulic ram's applying the force and the geometry on our press wheel. Being a parallelogram, it doesn't change through the, through the, um, the range of movement of the parallelogram. The other thing uh, we wanted is easy depth setting. So here we've kept our, our depth adjustment mechanism nice and close to the press wheel, again limiting any leverage over a higher system. Uh, and here we've got it reasonably clearly labelled. You can see six mil per hole. So we're currently on uh, our F. If we were to go back to our shallower setting on A, if we want it 30 mil deeper, five holes, go straight to F and it's as simple as that. If you know your alphabet, you won't struggle with doing that part. On our press wheels, we have a number of options available and that's sort of growing by the day. Um, this is a standard semi-pneumatic 
pack a tyre or press wheel and we will have V profiles and that sort of thing around as well. When it comes to points, similar sort of story, there's a lot of points available for this style of shank as it sits. This is a Dutch Openers one and you can see it's a double shoot assembly in line. We do have those in offsets, paired rows, uh, you can use a root boot as well, they have a, an option for going on there. Um, so there's a, there really is a lot of very easy customization available to be able to set those two points or pieces up for your conditions. So this, uh, this unit, very exciting development for us and, uh, and we certainly hope you'll be seeing a lot more of them around you soon. If you want to find out any, any more information about them, talk to your local Simplicity dealer today or jump on our website or get in contact with us if you need to.